in today's video I'm going to show you how I created this adorable little Christmas stocking card in Scan and Cut Canvas. The base card is a white base textured card. There's a blue pattern paper layer. There's an extra kind of cuff detail that I've stuck on with 3D foam and added an extra pattern paper layer and then some little toe and heel detail here. Um, I added a few little dots with a blue pen, but you don't necessarily need to do that. Okay, so I'm in Scan and Cut Canvas and I've got a new blank mat opened. The first thing I'm going to do is come over to the basic shapes. Now, I need... This shape here... And I need this shape here okay so the first thing I'm going to do this shape is going to become my little stocking base card now I'm just going to show you how I made mine the process I go through but obviously you know you you may have your own way of working or you may have your own processes this is just what I did at this particular stage I didn't set a size or anything I just literally played around with this shape so that's what I'm going to show you how to do so I knew that I wanted my boot shape to be narrower and obviously I knew I wanted it to be taller so that was my starting point I dragged it out this shape here already gives me the kind of shape that I wanted on my stocking but I'm going to manipulate it more then I double click to expose the editing nodes and this top right node here I'm going to drag out trying to keep the line as straight as possible and just drag it out a bit more because I wanted my stocking to be wider at the top here because this is going to create the fold for my card so that was my starting point then I came down to this straight line here and I clicked on one of the nodes until I got the line exposed. And with this line exposed, that then opens my editing box here. And on the drop down, I, I selected curve. And then I used these two curve handles to manipulate this shape to become more rounded for the stocking shape. So by dragging them out, you they then become rounder you can move this one down to make this arc longer and this not as deep if that makes sense and I literally just manipulated the shape until I was happy with it how the, the look that I wanted Now, I deliberately kept this bottom line straight because that's where my card is going to stand. But again, you could rotate this, you could, you know, shape it, do whatever you want. As I say, I'm just showing the process that I go through. Then I left click anywhere on the page to deselect just to let me have a look at the shape. I want this a bit, bit more arced and this not quite as high. So I'm going to double click again to expose the nodes. I'm going to bring this node down. And I'm just going to take these in a bit more and then left click again to see. And it's kind of getting there and then I think I'm going to drag this out a little bit more. And then on this line, again I selected one of the nodes to, to expose this line. And again I made it a curve but this time I only curved it in ever so slightly. I didn't want it to be a completely straight line but I didn't want it massively arced so again I'm just going to left click and then when I'm kind of happy with the design I, I just keep going back and looking at it and seeing how I think it looks so from there now the first thing that I'm going to do is create a duplicate so I'm going to right click and hit the duplicate and put my duplicate over here for now this then becomes the basis of my card so obviously this is going to fold along the top and it's going to sit here when it sits on your table or wherever so i need to create a duplicate so with this one selected i'm going to right click and create a duplicate 
I'm going to go to edit and flip it vertically so that when I line it up and it falls here this will fall down and it will all line up together I'm going to select both of these and I'm going to come to edit and center so they center together and just bring them onto my mat now this is bigger than I would want to cut this card probably but again you can resize it all at the end so before I actually weld these two together now, I'm just going to bring this shape in. I'm going to hold the shift key down and I'm going to rotate it so it's this way up. And then I'm just going to roughly position it over this stocking and I'm going to drag a corner in and I'm going to bring it down until it's just slightly wider than my stocking. And I'm going to look at it and see how it looks depth wise in proportion to the whole stocking. And I actually think that looks quite nice. So I'm going to select it, right click and make a duplicate and bring that over here for now. So, so with this one moved out of the way, I'm going to select this one and I'm going to position it so that I'll just zoom in so that it overlaps the stocking ever so slightly on either side here and then I'll just go back to the fit to mat so you can see I'm going to select both and I'm going to go to edit and weld okay and that's the basic shape now I jumped ahead of myself here I don't need that so I'm going to delete that one this is the one I want to duplicate. So I'm going to right click, create a duplicate. I'm going to go to edit and flip vertically. And then I'm going to position these two together. I'm going to go to edit center so they line up centrally. And I'm just going to use the arrows on my keyboard to just overlap them ever so slightly. They don't need to be overlapped too much, just enough to weld and I think I've moved it off center so I'm just going to select them both again and go edit center so with them centered to each other so they line up and they're overlapped slightly here I'm going to get to edit and weld and if I've got enough overlap they'll join in the middle so that's the basic card shape now with this one this is the same size as the base that we started off with before we welded this shape and what I want to do is make my patterned paper layer, which was slightly smaller. So with this one selected, I'm going to come to edit, go to the offset. I'm going to take this down to 0.08 and choose inward and say OK. And that gives me now this smaller layer, which just for the purposes of the video, I'm going to colour in green. So hopefully you can see it better. Now I can get rid of this one because I don't need it and then with this I'm going to do exactly the same. I want to right click and create a duplicate then I'm going to come to edit, offset, take it down to 0.08 and choose inward and say OK. So with my original card this will fold in half and this was the white base this layer was the blue pattern paper layer this original layer layered on top in white card and then this inner layer i cut in pattern paper to sit inside and i don't need that one so i can get rid of it so they were the elements of my card and then I would separate them onto the mat so that these two pieces here I know I'm cutting in pattern paper and then everything else I'm cutting in card now the other thing you can do if you like an insert in your card which I do I don't like to necessarily just write on the inside of my card with this shape selected do the same thing edit offset 
take this down to 0 0.08 and say inward and say OK. And that then creates you a layer that you can cut in coloured paper or white paper and sit it inside your card. And as a visual aid for me, you don't have to do this. I colour, if I'm doing an insert, I always colour them in red. And my toppers, I always colour in green. So these two, I would colour in, in the same colour green. And then when I save this up here, giving it a name and I save it, and I come back to it next year, I know in my mind that anything red is an insert and anything green is a topper. The scan and cut can't cut by colour, so it's, it's irrelevant to the actual design and when you send it over to scan and cut canvas, but it's just a visual aid for me. You don't have to do it. As I say, I'm just showing you the process that I go through. So I would save that now in here using this icon, give it a name and save it, and then it's there. Now, if you want to cut this smaller, I would line everything up on top of each other. Just make sure that everything is roughly in place then select everything, right click and make it a group and once it's a group you can then shrink it down and cut it smaller or cut it bigger however you want to but obviously don't forget to ungroup it and separate your bits out on your mat for when you come to cut it in your various types of paper or card. Just make sure everything is sat within your mat and then you, you're good to go. Okay, then one last thing I did which I nearly forgot about. So I created the heel and toe bits of card as to add a bit more dimension. So I did this using the inner matting layer and to do that, there are various ways you can do it. I'm just going to zoom in just on this section. So you can come to your path icon and you can left click and drag out and plot your lines this way. And double click when you get back to the end and then you can double click to expose the nodes. You can change the lines to straight lines or curves and manipulate them but I did it by using a couple of the shapes that are already in scan and cut canvas so the first one I used to make the heel was the triangle so I'm just going to zoom back out to fit to map and get the triangle and again don't forget I'm doing it on this in a smaller shape that sits on the outside of my card, my matting layer. So I took it down and positioned it roughly in the corner. Again, I'll zoom in just so you can see what I'm doing. And then first of all, I took it down by eye and positioned it just in the corner to see how it looked. And then for this one, I used an oval. So I chose the little fat oval which I'll just drag in and again shrunk it down rotated it and put it into position and then I manipulated the nodes so again I'll zoom in so you can see what I'm doing so I'm going to start with this one I'm going to take this one down a bit more just doing this by eye, as I say, it's up to you how you want to do it, but this was the process I worked through. So we'll start with the heel. So again, double click to expose the nodes, and then I just dragged the nodes about until they fit the design, and that one's fairly easy. Then with the oval, I... In fact, I'm not so sure if I did use the oval. I'm trying to think which one I did use. Just hang on a second and let me have a think. I think I used the half circle, actually. So we'll just zoom back out and get that half circle. And get rid of that. 
and then rotate this and shrink it down and position it. And then I'm just going to zoom back in again. Yeah, I think I did. So again, I did the same thing. I put it roughly in place, double click to expose the nodes, and then I dragged out the handles until it fitted the shape and then move the nodes. Now this one you can see is an arc. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select this line. So I'm going to choose a node that selects this line and I'm going to add a point in. And then I'm going to bring this one down and manipulate this until it drops into place and then with this one I'm just going to move it out ever so slightly because it's got a slight bit of a shape on it and then I just need to work manipulating this part of the design here so I'm going to select this node which selects this line and I'm going to add another point in and then I'm going to drag the point out to the corner and I'm just going to use the handles here to manipulate it back up so it's level with this line and then again I'm going to manipulate this one got the wrong handle there so I'm just going to drag that handle and then you can move the node around just to pull it into shape I clicked off and I just kept looking at it and zooming in until I got it how I wanted it to look. I may have to put another node in here so I'm going to select this node which selects this line and add another node in and then literally that's all I did. I just kept manipulating the nodes into place until it sat on top of this green stocking shape. Once I was happy you have to just manipulate the nodes around. You might have to keep moving the handles and moving the nodes into place and it will line up eventually for you. And then I left clicked away. So I'm just going to go back to fit to mat. So again, now these two bits I cut in white card, so I would leave them all black. Anything in black for me is my base, so generally white card. Anything in red is like my insert for my card, and anything green is my topper. So this is how I would set my mat out. And then, as I say, save it, take it over to scan and cut, and then just delete the bits that you don't want to cut cut the bits that you do and then bring it back onto the mat and just repeat the process. Take away the bits that you're not cutting, leave the bits that you are. So I hope you found that helpful. Please give the video a thumbs up if you did. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't already do so. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.